Welcome to the Unicast. I'm Chris. And I'm Vincent. And today we're joined by a good friend, Charlie. Um, and today we're going to talk about Pilsen, his uh, upcoming, his hustle with music. And to be honest, for the, for the longest time, I thought Pilsen was like equivalent to Andersonville. I didn't know it wasn't from the, in the South Side. <laughs> no, it's, yeah, not even yeah. the South Side. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Uh, welcome, Charlie. Thank you. And uh, for our listeners and our viewers, um, unfortunately today, due to time constraints, we did not get a chance to get any food, but we got coffee and some water. Some We're water. Good. <laughs> Stay hydrated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. All right. So, Charlie, uh, can you just give us like a rundown, basically, like of uh, who you are, what do you do, and kind of like where your passions lie and where you're planning to go with that? Okay. Um, I am Charlie Glitch. I am an artist, uh, Pilsen Chicago artist. Um, I do a lot of things for my community, a lot of events for my community. Um, I started DJing at the age of 12. Oh, wow. Um, taking it serious more at the age of 15 when I started going into the clubs. I mm-hmm. um, started producing. Clubs at 15? Yeah. What? I was Wild. Young, I was, what? Yeah, I was one of the youngest. I wasn't Damn. 21 yet. I was, he was 15, you know? Yeah. So people would look at me like, yo, and back then it was all records. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All vinyl, so I would be... Like carrying like four or five crates of records and your house is shorty like bringing all this stuff you know right um so that's actually how my how i started getting recognized by being the youngest in mm-hmm. the game at that time um and then just from there just taking it into what i feel that um i think the direction of music should go mm-hmm. towards yeah um and just opening up everyone's mind to through um through that genre like um like genre bending yeah you know a lot of people will stick with just house music some mm-hmm. people will just stick with hip hop yeah um but for our events or my events since mm-hmm. I was a kid um my events would be all all styles of music blending into one you know so I also come from a Latin background Hispanic background so oh. I incorporate a lot of that into um into my art and my music okay that's pretty dope. So like um kind of like let's bring it back a little bit right because um we're talking about how you were you started pretty much DJing at the clubs at twelve or no at uh, 15. fifteen and you started at twelve so what kind of inspired you to kind of like or what was kind of like the click what clicked in your head that you know this is what you wanted to do um when I when I when I realized <laughs> that we were dancing to my to like my sets and getting and being able to control the vibe yeah you know being able to like. Um, really understand that that you're the reason someone's gonna have a good time. Mm-hmm. You know, you can control someone's mood, emotions, yeah. and emotions by yeah. by music. You know, sound waves. Yeah, yeah sound waves, frequencies. <laughs> That's wild. What? So you said growing up in Pilsen definitely influenced your style of music too, right? You're oh, trying to incorporate like that Latin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was it was it was predominantly a, a Mexican neighborhood. Mm. Uh, but before that, it was obviously uh, like like Czech and all that. Before yeah. that, like, um, but like in the fifties, nineteen fifties, sixties, started becoming more um, Mexican immigrants. Um, so my grandma actually came from Mexico, mm-hmm. with my grandfather when they were like twenty, um, and bought the houses that we're out now in still to this day, um, and just being around that neighborhood, just you know. Um, a bunch of like bandas music, um, yeah. cumbia, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. even salsa, merengue, like all the Latin stuff, oh, Re- music. reggaeton. Um, reggaeton, oh my god! You know? <laughs> um, and yeah. then plus my dad was also a DJ, so okay. So my parents were divorced. Like my parents got divorced when I was a kid. Our our connection was through through music as well. Like mm. spending time. Like, all right, you know, get two certain ta- get two records. This is how you mix them. That was basically like it's, it was more. of Communicating and like it's like father son bonding, bonding like, time. yeah bonding yeah. time, where it started turning into a competition where it's like oh. well I can travel and get more gigs and I like you know what I mean I was mm-hmm. running, running oh, better wow. than my pops like yo well, you DJ at these clubs I'm gonna DJ at four more yeah clubs oh well, have you ever played out of Chicago you know what I want to start playing out of Chicago have you played out of the out of the, the out of the U S I want to play out the U S you know yeah. what I mean so Dang. I've always just uh, I don't know I think I give a lot of my credit to my parents mm-hmm. you know. Um, but definitely trying to come, trying to battle my dad, and like, as a as a as a kid, you're always trying to be better than your your, your dad, or yeah, prove like yo, I can be better than you. Look, <laughs> yeah, you know. So that that was my main motivation too. So okay, mm. 
Dang, that's wild. So every time you play your set, do you think about your parents often then? Oh, um, specifically your dad. There's certain songs, certain songs, and when I do play certain songs, like I think about like, like oh, triggers yeah, a memory. Yeah, triggers a memory. Or yeah. I played them like I just play because like, yo, my OG loves this. I love this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I didn't play this one. It's a classic. Everyone's gonna love it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, they're they're in the same age range of like, like the crowd I'm maybe playing for at that at that moment. Mm-hmm. Um, so they'll appreciate the song. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of factors, you know, um, that go into like a set because sometimes. Um, like I don't take any requests. I don't like hate requests. You know what I mean? If just let me do what I gotta do, you're gonna have a good time. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I I actually encountered a lot of people like that. Um, running up to so, the DJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. um, back in the day, well, not really <laughs> back in the day. It's not saying that I'm that old, but like um, <laughs> was it like it, it was about twenty? I think it was like twenty thirteen or twenty fourteen. Around that time for like a year, I was actually a uh, a bouncer at uh, Mad River. Oh wow! Yeah, <clears throat> and it was the funniest thing, right? Because whenever I'm not, have you ever been to Mad River? Uh-uh. No. So basically, their the DJ booth is like on the second level, right. right? And then like there's this there's this little like VIP den right behind it, and there's two staircases on either side going up. Mm-hmm. You know, and you have a like you have a a bouncer on each on each staircase and then you have like them through, spread out and we'll go through rotations and whenever I get on that staircase you always see these like drunk college kids going up <laughs> like walking up like I need to talk to the DJ I need, I need, I need, a, I need a request a song you know my, my favorite song it's my song I need it or whatever and it's like the DJ tells me like don't let anyone up here because they're going to be doing one thing and one thing only request the song <laughs> exactly yeah. Yep. yeah it's and, annoying yeah like, unless there's, like, you know, a uh, VIP event happening behind the booth, too. You know, if someone bought the, v- the uh, VIP table or something like that, then yeah. But if not, then, yeah, don't. Is it a small VIP space up there? Or is yeah, it's, it's, pretty, it was, it's pretty small. It's yeah. got, like, probably, like, four or five little, like, um, booth loungers. Oh, okay. And then, like, mm-hmm. three or four tables behind there. Hmm. But, yeah. That was my experience. And when you said that, like, yeah, yeah. I know that. <laughs> yeah, it's a... It's a headache, or when they or they get your phone, the phone like, oh please, yeah. oh, please. I don't want to get that. Get that shit out of my face. <laughs> it's funny though. It's funny because you you'll see it because they're drunk as hell. Yeah, and yeah. they're like, play this song, and then there's, uh, there's gonna be times where like that screen just black. You're like, got you. Man. Or you get those people where they're like, is this code check? Like, no, what? The fuck? Like, yeah, like, Wait, I heard I heard that I heard that <laughs> oh, before. Like, I'm playing. <laughs> And obviously you see me DJing, this DJ equipment's right there. Yeah, yeah. A girl comes like, oh, is this coach check here? Like, no, it's not coach check. You obviously see me DJing right What around the here. hell? <laughs> trying to get in the backstage, man. Yeah, right. That VIP treatment. Yeah, coach. right. <laughs> That's so stupid. It's coach check. Yeah. That's funny as hell. Um, so what was I going to say? So when you, how does it work for DJs to uh, frequently play at like a certain spot? Like, like oh, I, like I play at, or the guy that plays at Mad River, he's always there almost, pretty much, right? That yeah. DJ was always there. Is More that is that something, um, yeah? How do you? Um, you know, back in back back in the day, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was it was uh it was talent before mm-hmm. you know, it was talent. It was re- it really was, um, but now it's so saturated with with everyone technology being able yeah. being mm-hmm. able to like have anyone just become a DJ now, mm-hmm. or it's like now, people or DJs have bookings because they probably do it for cheap mm-hmm. and they bring a crowd you know what I mean mm-hmm. instead of like okay I'm actually gonna pay this artist because he's super dope and he's super talented yeah Um. so I mean there's I, it's really hard to really answer that question because like you could be you could be talented and still get the amount that, you're, that, that you deserve mm-hmm. Um. but then right now it's also like yo it's just basically like who's like who you're gonna stroke you know what I mean yeah and the masses is like right now it's hard EDM it's like those hard drops so how do you compete with that cause Um, you're also an independent artist yeah yeah um I just still stick to the streets Mm -hmm. you know the streets know the the, the streets know like those are the ones that actually set set the mood for what's gonna come up in the in in a commercial world or stuff like that so right now I'm focusing on still the streets like Okay, this is what sound we're gonna push mm. so that it can get to that level of like commercial, you know, mm-hmm. um, status. But and these are the artists we're gonna work with. It's just like I'm in that position right now. 
and I'm very grateful and thankful for that we can set the mood of what's going to be next interesting you know like for a while it was house so we pushed house artists and juke came we did juke and then uh, reggaeton we started doing reggaeton mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then we started working on cumbia stuff which mm-hmm. is like a it's cumbia is mainly from from Africa but we incorporated it in the Mexican roots and just created our own um, hybrid. Like hybrid of it mm-hmm. that's where cool. cumbia came from and then we started pushing it more here in Chicago yeah Um. the last like five years okay. started kicking really hard so oh so you're saying you, you left Chicago for a while I did I, I yeah I left Chicago I was in Mexico um, I produced in Mexico I mean I've lived there everywhere at least for a year like New York mm-hmm. Cali uh, Mexico yeah um, yeah so your passion has brought you all over the place man. yeah my passion Damn, has dope. yeah I've been fortunate to like eat off of it yeah you know and it's really and, and it's really and it's, it is hard because it's like people are getting there's DJs getting like 10,000 yeah a gig you know what I mean mm-hmm. and this is like damn what the fuck like damn 10 grand alright cool you know but it's yeah. like just artists like us we make a couple hundred yeah uh, a gig, like to say 500 bucks a, a show yeah it's still good you know mm-hmm. but there's that that, that gap yeah, yeah. why well, I can invest this much because I only have 500 yeah mm-hmm. I got 10,000 he can pay for the marketing and the PR but the fact that the independent movement is so huge right now I mean, we have a lot to say in what is going to come up next in the next couple of years. Mm-hmm. So, like, I guess my next question, or kind of, like, going off of that is, like, with all these independent artists that are kind of, like, popping up here and there, right? With that being, like, a growing industry where people want to produce their own stuff and push their own kind of, like, music and their own genre and their own tastes out there. How, how do you, like, you know, how does that work, right, in terms of, like, collaboration right now in a market or in a scene right that's like so independent right like each individual person is pretty much just working out for themselves compared to like you know we have like a record label you have these artists that you know you're probably close with and then you know you're kind of like tight knit and just kind of working like that um i think just getting everyone on board and they 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 play their role okay like making sure everyone has their role like Everyone's an artist, you know what I mean? Everyone wants to be like, oh, I want to be the face, I want to be that. Mm-hmm. But it just coming to an understanding, like, okay, this person's going to be the face first. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like, I have like, it's like ASAP, ASAP Mob and like ASAP mm-hmm. Rocket, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yep. Like, they're all ASAP, but it's like one at a time, boom, 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 boom. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like, if, if people want to collab, people want to put together a, uh, a collective, yeah. Um, have a, have a, have a mission, like, have a, like, a goal have mm-hmm. an end an end goal like um but ego all ego has to get out of the way all the egos have to get out of the way like that's what kills it like as growing up I and I had a big ego you know what I mean mm-hmm. sometimes I feel like I still do it at times where I gotta like you I gotta I have to like humble myself what, what do you tell I, yourself um I haven't made it yet there's no mm-hmm. reason for me to mm-hmm. to like talk smack you know what I mean yeah. or just be like oh fuck you like <laughs> You know what I mean? Even though I know what I've done. Yeah. You know, even though what, what I've known what I've done and created, it's like it doesn't still give me the right to. Yeah. Because I want to say is like, for the most part, you've been in the scene and kind of DJing and doing your doing the grind, right? A lot longer than, you know, a lot of people that kind of like pick it up from like high school or even like pick it up from uh, college, right? Because they go to their first show, like, oh, that's dope. I want to like, you know, dabble in that. Right, and it's just crazy, right? Because like you have such a wide gap, right, compared to like a lot of newer artists that are like being like, oh yeah, you know, like they have that, you know, that clout or where they like they have that um, confidence and kind of like that ego, right? Mm-hmm. Saying like, oh yeah, I can do this, you know, like like they're mixing in like um, at house parties, you know, in their own house, and like everyone's liking the music, and they're like, yeah, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this, and then they go out there and doing it. And then that ego just kind of shoots them down, right? Because they have, they hold themselves at so high. And then when they come out into reality, it just kind of like pummels on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's just crazy. Yeah. I mean, part, also part of the grind is like you, how do you ride that momentum in the beginning, right? It feels so good. Like, oh, you're getting recognition. You're doing great. Your, your work is finally like making people feel good, right? But then... After a while, how do you 
how do you catch yourself when you feel like you're go, you're starting going down that that downhill? You know, like mentally and you burn out and stuff like that. Um, you allow you allow you trust you start to trust you, you you have no you have no reason. But I mean, for me, I mean, I'm speaking for myself. So it's like when I have those feelings or whatever, like I'll start recruiting a younger person or your or younger talent or your mm-hmm. work for or work with the the youth to be like. Okay, this is what I know. Um, if you want to learn from it, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's basically because it's like, it sounds messed up, but it's like a vampire needs to suck blood and just like, <laughs> to stay alive. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, I'm not yeah. saying that the kid, the young is like the blood and all that. Or whatever. <laughs> I'm not a vampire, but it's just like... Are you sure? Nah, yeah, I'm not pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, oh, but it's just like oh, no. showing that, showing like the, just showing the youth, basically. That's how I, that's how I kind of still stay... I feel like relevant and still, it's still like motivated. Yeah, you know what I mean, because when you see, if when you see someone like take over, like not take over, but like, like kind of follow in your footsteps, and you you hear that, like, oh man, you know what I'm doing this because, because you've helped me out, mm-hmm. or like you you, you know what I mean like yeah. I hear that I've heard that a lot I'm like damn holy like that that makes you feel like okay I'm doing the right thing it feels good it feels good like yeah. okay yeah. cool like and it's also like a it's not like a an ego thing no more right because that's now more of like a it's something more like you know meaningful yeah it's right? meaningful it's more like yo I, I do have the reason to be here I do yeah. have like I am doing something right yeah it's kind of like um, I forgot which or who said that but it's kind of like passing the torch on to like the younger generation yeah. right the generation that's to be uh, that's coming up you know I'm not saying like they're coming up now but like you know they're developing their skills or their talents you know now so that way when the time comes when you know you hang up your torch or you hang up your jacket right that new mm-hmm. pe- the new people coming in you've had influence on them that kind of helped them stick through it you yeah. know because yeah. you know you're gonna get you're gonna get people like that's gonna be mean as fuck right they're gonna be bullying you do it, saying this saying that right saying like oh you know you're, you're doing something completely stupid whether families or friends or even acquaintances and then you have that one person that said you can do it yeah Right. These apprentices, where do you find them? Um, well, I'm doing a bunch of high school stuff and like community community work. So mm-hmm. um, in Pilsen, in oh. Pilsen. Okay. Yeah. Um. So basically, like just like youth events. Yeah. Um, I'm actually gonna start doing music production classes. Nice. Um, at the Work Park, which is a Chicago Public Park, and in, in Pilsen, mm-hmm. um, from ages like seven to fifteen. Yeah. And that'll start like in March. So right now I got the, I, we got the, the ten computer like ten IMAX. I had to hook them up with the the software. I'm, I'm working on getting a sp- um, like a sponsor for like headphones mm. and like keyboards, so all the kids can have like keyboards, yeah. MIDI controllers, Beats. Yeah, so um, that's one of the projects that I'm working on. Like by by spring, yeah. it should be up and running already. Yeah. Okay. You hear oh, that, Dre? Shout out, man. Yeah, Beats <laughs> by Dre. Send them, bro. Oh, Send them over, bro. Help the community out. Yep. There you go. <laughs> Um, um, that's that's crazy, and, and then when you teach them, they're pretty much gonna be playing similar music to you, or are yeah, you just no, it's gonna be hands out. It's, it's gonna be hands out. So it's like I have the le- the computers out ready. Um, I'll show them. It's I mean I have a whole syllabus. I'm running it all out. Nice. So it's basically like you can see the big screen uh-huh. of me working, and you'll know what what plugin to use, where the mm-hmm. kick is at, mm-hmm. um, shortcuts. When you get to that level of like right. understanding, mm-hmm. I'll show you the shortcuts right. of stuff. So um, so mostly you're just teaching like the foundations, but not really guiding not pushing your um influence like on their music oh yeah no 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 like, it's all it, no 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 they're all that's all their creativity yeah. all i'm doing is showing them how to lay down their ideas gotcha. you know what i mean it's mm-hmm. not like oh these are my ideas put them down mm-hmm. like no no you're out you're a creative person but if you want to do a certain bpm uh you know what i mean if you want another a different rhythm or, different, or like a s- different keys like that's all you i'm just going to show you how you can put that on Mm-hmm. on the screen yeah it's kind of like your art teacher showing you how to like draw in the line draw a circle yeah. <laughs> draw a circle <laughs> I mean it's as simple as that yeah yeah it's <laughs> like there you square. go <laughs> it's like you're how'd you fuck that up I'm <laughs> trying so hard I got a circle that's awesome boom <laughs> that's square um and then is this program free for the public school or is oh it no it's free yeah it's free? wow it's free it's gonna be a free program yeah, yeah. that's awesome man yeah so um that's one. That's how, yeah. That's one. Um, I did it before back in. The, I, I did it a couple years ago, maybe like 
like more than a couple years ago, like eight years ago at a Columbia College. So I wouldn't have like Columbia College students mm-hmm. take a DJ class with me. Awesome. Um, so yeah, that's that's how I get like the youth involved. Yeah. Um, I even like do street team stuff. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. kids want to get involved, but they can't go to the, to the bars or clubs or all that. Like, yo, pass out, put up, post up some flyers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Here's a shirt or some stickers or something. Just mm-hmm. everyone wants to every everyone wants to feel like they're part of something. Right. Mm-hmm. You know. Right. And it's like if right now it's just I have the outlet I guess that kids want. You feel responsible. Too. I feel responsible. Like yeah. All right. I don't gang bang. Don't yeah. Be a drug dealer. Right. Don't. You know what I mean, if you need to keep occupied and busy, like right. Join us here. You can stay busy. That's awesome yeah. because I don't know if after school matters is still out there, but. I think it is, they but their are, programs are showing. They're they're showing. Up. Yeah. Mm. See that I know for for a couple of my friends like that definitely helped them keep them off from like trouble, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's like huge respect for someone like you. You you don't have the backing of after school matters or the city or whatever, but I mean you're taking it into your own hands. Like that's that's huge respects for that man. Thank mm-hmm. you. Yeah. That's we really need fine, we need man. that. Kids need that. They need that role model and that like that person that's kind of in the classroom outside of like you know the teachers because the teachers can only do so much mm-hmm. right because they're dealing and they're handling like larger groups of kids at a time for like a longer period of time and they can only do so much right they can only see so many signs that you know people or the children are troubled in one way or another right whether it's bullying um, within the family or even just kind of like lost in their head you know, and just kind of like being there to have these programs that kind of like help those smaller and few. Mm-hmm. It helps these individuals that, you know, suffer from like, you know, that bullying or the, right. like the distress within that family. Right. Right. Because like if they don't want to go home because, you know, their mom and dad are like fighting or their mm-hmm. dad's a drunk or their mom's beating them or, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Right. Vice versa. You know, they have a space to go to at least for, you know, like an hour, maybe two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and that just kind of is a sigh of relief in their heads. And they're not going to want to go to a teacher. They're going to feel lame, you know? They want someone, like, cool, like, want to, like, co- like young, feel young like them or something like that. Um, yeah, they want to relate. They yeah. want to relate, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's really cool that you're, like, doing that. Because um, for me, a like, growing up, uh, my parents were also divorced, right? But um, they both remarried really early on in uh, my childhood but I just had a lot of I've talked about this before but yeah it's just like I've had a lot of epiphanies and kind of like thoughts going in my head it's like because when I was a kid I thought that was normal right mom lives at one house on her own I go visit her sometimes dad lives at one home you know go visit him every now and then right and I thought that was normal because that was that, that was normal for me and then it wasn't until like um, the elementary school and stuff like that when I saw or when I went over to my friends' houses, right? And like, it's like, oh, their mom and dad are in the same household, you know? Then that like really got me questioning, and then that's when like the epiphany hit. Like, oh, mm. my parents aren't like into it, or they're not like, you know, they're not together because of X, Y, and Z, right? And then you know, just kind of that really brought me down like a really weird rabbit hole of emotion and just kind of like wondering where I fit in the either family, right? Because it's kind of like I had no family for the most part because they both have their own families. Yeah. And then it also kind of, I don't know, it was a little gut-wrenching, right? But I mean, I was raised by that, my extended family, you know, now realizing, yeah, looking back, you know, I love them all to death. Mm-hmm. But just kind of like, Early on, it was like, what do I do? And I would always throw tantrums and, like, fits of rage just to kind of get attention, right? Because I wasn't getting it at home at the end of the day. At least you didn't join a gang. <laughs> I created it. One. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, what do you I mean? didn't join it. I created <laughs> oh, one. Shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Big man. Big man in the house. But no, um, <laughs> funny that you had mentioned that. Um, <laughs> at, uh, what you call it, at CMA. So for those that don't know, um, in Chicago, CMA stands for Chinese Mutual Aid Association. And it's kind of a collective that kind of helps immigrant families kind of assimilate to um, westernized cultures or just even like over here. 
And they also had like an after school program for the kids, mm-hmm. right? I was in that after school program. And funny enough, it's like this group of like little kids that like I was hanging out with, they were like talking. And then one day, I forgot which one or who, who he was, but they were talking about how like they wanted to start like a little gang. Oh my gosh. You know, I was like, I was like, okay, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> and then we just, it was the dumbest thing in the world. And like, it's called Danger Boys. I don't even remember the name. <laughs> Maybe it could have been called Danger Boys for all I know. But it was the funniest thing though, because like, we would just be the troubled kids, right? That kind of caused havoc and trouble for, um, call it, for pretty much the director of the, uh, of that section, right? <laughs> the uh, actual after school programs and stuff like that. And we'd always get in trouble, you know, because we're doing one thing or another thing, doing stupid things here and there. <laughs> We would like fireworks in the freaking washroom. Like kids, as kids yeah, do. Yeah, exactly. As kids, as kids, kids do. do. As yeah. kids do, you know. But it was never anything like... Now they're just at home on their iPads, bro. Yeah, I wish kids would go out and blow fireworks. Yeah. Right <laughs> I'm just getting chucked, chucked at by M80s. <laughs> Dude, those things are dangerous. Yeah, no. Don't do those kids. Don't yeah, do that, yeah, kids. Don't, don't do, do that. that. Well, what's an M80? I don't even know what the hell that is. <laughs> what was um, what was Pilsen like back back then? Like Growing up. As a yeah, kid. growing up. Yeesh, what was it young like? Year. Yo, honestly, I, I've seen the, the the change. Um, honestly, it was bad. It was really bad. There was gangs every block, mm-hmm. different mm-hmm. gangs every block. Um, a lot of killings, a lot of shootings. I mean, I lost a lot of friends like, through gun violence. Yeah. Um, it was bad. It was really bad. You know, it's a lot better now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Say, it's, people feel safer now. Um, how long ago was the change? Like five years, I'd say. Wow. It's like that, yeah. From five years ago to now, it's like, Pew. shit. But that's, that's not that far back. Think about it's, it. not, it's, like, it's not that far back. When a change is gonna happen, though, it's like it happens like that. Is it because of gentrification? Is there? Any- I think yeah. It's it's definitely. I mean, I don't even like that word anymore because it's just being used so much. Where it's yeah. like, it doesn't really matter anymore. Mm. You know what I mean? But yeah, yeah gentrification. Mm. Like, you know, it was just like I mean, they were not. They weren't giving any any. Latin or Mexican families like loans anymore or anything oh, like that, but they were giving loans to like to like corporate yeah investors and like bigger investors. So that's what brought the gentrification, like mm. not giving the la- the Hispanics the loans or approvals, but giving the other people the approvals. Right. So it brought in like more kind of like development into yeah, that area. Yeah, more development. Which yeah. brought in more different like a lot more people of different backgrounds yeah you know that's wild yeah i mean i don't believe that i mean it's i mean like i tell everyone if you if you really want to stay somewhere if you really want if that's your neighborhood you know no matter where you're at you're gonna figure out how to stay there you're Mm -hmm. gonna you're gonna i mean you can keep crying about it and be like oh no no they're they're coming in or you're gonna stand up for yourself and be like with this to my hood i'm still staying here you're not gonna buy my house i don't want to even sell it Mm mm-hmm you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's not for sale. Yeah. Like, welcome to my neighborhood. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You know? Uh, I, got, I got you on that. I mean, like, if you, th- like, that's crazy, though, because, like, in the last five years, that's, that happened to Pilsen. Oh, yeah. And you can slowly see it now happening in, like, um, Uptown. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, right? for sure, yep. Within, like, the last two, two, three, two years. three years. Yep. Right? That's been starting up. I mean, you see the towering flats? Yeah. That crazy. What what's that? What's that building called? I forget. I always forget. The I building. think I think it's called Flats. Yeah, the Flats, Flats building. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like they bought that. Oh, uh, well, that just office building, just two or three years ago, mm-hmm. and now it's they're on Broadway. Yeah, they're yeah. on Broadway. Oh, yeah. And then like across from the parking garage. Yep. And then now it's turning into the like the condos or mm-hmm. whatever the apartments that they're actually building up. And I heard I, I could be wrong, but like I heard that the same developers that are um, erecting that building also bought out the um, that old the, bank building on the corner oh damn um, yeah. on uh, on, cl- on uh, right there by uh, Lawrence Lawrence Lawrence, yeah. Yeah. Lawrence and Broadway big one yeah apparently they bought that one too and they are knocking down I don't know if they bought the Broadway and Foster where the uh, check and go used to be oh yeah I don't know if they bought that one mm. but yeah like slowly, when one when one building starts going up, everything else everything else just starts getting right. bought out in the area. Right. But I mean, like you were saying, it just don't get bought up then. 
right? Yeah. Just stand your ground. Yeah, yeah. stand your Easier ground. said than done for sure, but like, if you really want to keep the people and the culture and all that stuff there, the community, just... But that's the thing though, right? The community rooted. needs to stay rooted. The community needs to band together and work together, right? To kind of, to help it prosper. Yeah. You know? But at the same time, it's like, you have all these mom and pop shops, right? You have these, you have all these grocery stores on Argyle, mm-hmm. right? That are in so close vicinity that they're pretty much competing for each other's business at the same time, <laughs> which really sucks because a lot of times what will happen is they're starting to fall back on rent. When that happens, even if they own the property, right? Like if they, let's say they own the property, okay, they're falling back on their mortgage, they're falling back on all their payments, mm-hmm. you know, and they got stuff to keep inventory. You know, inventory that doesn't get sold, that expires, has to go out the door. They got to get new inventory. And it's just, it sucks when that happens, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... And then, eventually, you know, when a guy in a suit says, you know what, I'll I'll save you your trouble and I have the answer for all your trouble. When he comes to that door and hands you that check and you look at it, you're like, this will solve all my problems right now. Yeah. Yo, throw it back to Peter. (laughs) There's this guy. Oh man. There is this guy. At this point I don't care, I'm just gonna say it. But <laughs> so we you know for Sip Cafe, right? Yeah. So we're chilling there, we're me and Chris. This is before podcast, like we're just trying to figure things out. And my buddy comes on and he's like, Yo, um, I have my, my business partner, uh, we could help you out, or like we could figure something out. And I'm like, Oh bet, okay. Right. So he was, he just wanted to arrange a meeting. Yeah, arrange a meeting. Yeah. So this guy comes in and he was like what, twenty minutes late? He was 20 minutes late. <laughs> Showed up. <laughs> and then he says, um, not even business partner, but I'm going to call him my protege. The person that's like... Peter said that. Yeah. Peter yeah. said that this is a... Uh, he works for me. They're not partners or anything like that. The, yeah, he works for me. So and then that. that's when like my bulbs were like my red light, red light, <laughs> red flags are like popping off. And he, he had like a... I think he had a Rolex on and he had two phones and he, the whole, and a Gucci wallet and the whole time he was talking right he was like moving things around like he's, he's just trying to get his trying phone to fidgeting. Wallet. He, yeah he was fidgeting well he's trying like to get it. like our attention like look look I got money like that kind of thing right he drives a Honda Accord but anyway <laughs> <laughs> it's like a 97 Honda Accord I mean it's like when, when I brought that up he was like I drive it because it keeps me humble but he still lives with his fucking mom too <laughs> <laughs> anyway so the guy was like you know he didn't even ask what our business was about, like the podcast and potentially a gym or whatever. But he was like, it sounds like you guys, to me, need money. How much do you want? Throw a number at Throw me. Throw a number at me. And I'm like, no. I was like, like. So, yeah. No, no, no. Try no. to take it, man. It's like, why? No, it's because like, <laughs> you know. Throw a number at me. That's what you call me. sharks. Yeah. People that want to. But especially when they're going, at, when they're against your own community, like your own. Like, yeah. bro. Yeah. There's a lot of those. It's crazy though. It's like they're just trying to flex one way, and then like they're just trying to get you to bite. Yeah. And when he left, the guy was like, <laughs> "I was still there because I was just chilling with um, uh, Gigi and Nan." And he decided to stay over, stay there, drink a little bit. We were oh, drinking man. alcohol. He told me the story. I was like, I was dead. And I was just looking at his watch, um, and I had like this something something similar to this. Nothing, nothing flashy. He took off his Rolex and he's like, "You should try this on." And I'm like, "All right, whatever." He puts it on me and I'm like, uh, "This is this is whatever." Because he probably was trying to get a reaction, like, "Oh, this yeah. feels amazing." But now I'm like, "No, nah, I'm I'm good with my watch. Like, I don't need this." And yeah. he's just like, "Fuck, <laughs> you look like failure." He's like, well, I fucked like, up." <laughs> no, like what what tilted me a little bit was the fact that is it real? I, I, I don't know. I, don't know. Uh, I mean, I didn't see how do you it tell if it's real. I don't even know. I don't. I, I don't fucking <laughs> smash it. <laughs> 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 if you can survive that, yeah, it's real. <laughs> if, you if, if it's not rattling after that, you know, it's the real deal. Man. Just come off as some like Chinese barbarian, like. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. oh, but yeah, no. Like what tilted me was when he told me like um, uh, this guy was like talking to like Gigi and Nan and how like he was oh, yeah. like asking like what what drinks are good, what's popular, and stuff like that. And then he got like a drink or two. And then you were telling me how he was like, pretty much looking down on their cafe. He was looking down at their their numbers, their business, and then he also pitched an idea to help them boost their social media, and like get them more revenue. But Gigi, you know Gigi, so she was like, "Oh, okay, well." Yeah, like, all right, shut up, yeah, yeah, all right. yeah. yeah. That's how she is. I love that about her. Gigi's <laughs> dope. I know her too. <laughs> She's awesome. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, like when 
when he told, because I was already gone at that point, and when he told me that, I was like, dude, this Peter guy, I just want to punch him in the face. It's like, you don't go up to a business, especially my friend's business, and tell them, like, you know, what they need to do better, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you don't even know them. Yeah, you don't. It's like, dude, open up your own business to yeah. try it out. And he kept, he kept his, he tried so hard to flash everything. He's like, I know people in Vegas, like, if you come to Vegas, we can go to the clubs. I like, kid you not. Who is this guy? I haven't met him? I don't know. I don't think you've met him. I don't think you've met him. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, no, it's like, I kid you not though, like, I feel like when I was in Vegas this summer, I was oh, you at, saw you saw him. No, man. yeah, I, I swear to God, I feel like I saw him. It was the weirdest thing in the world, man. Like, what I was just walking, doing? huh? He was just, we were at a, um, a performing pool party. outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like that no, we, we were at a pool party. party. <laughs> we were at a pool party, and uh, pretty much, like, me and my group were just chilling, listening to music, just having fun drinking and stuff like that and I just see him just from the corner of my eye like I just saw this one group and then I just see him and he's just standing around drinking the hand looking left right and just like yeah no he ain't shit <laughs> drink drink oh my god so, I was like dude I saw that like is that Peter? I couldn't tell cause like it was like tackle. a little it was a little <laughs> <laughs> what if that wasn't him? What if that was another Philippine guy? Oh, yeah, that was him, right. dude. God, I can't do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, it's like um, I thought it was him. It could have been him. It might have not been him. I don't know. Uh-huh. We'll never know because I never approached him because mm-hmm. I was too drunk, and I was drunk too. So it could have been like you know the the drunk glasses that maybe, were seeing him. Maybe. Right. Mm. That's funny though. So Charlie, what? Um, we should ask this first, but why? Why that name, Charlie Glitch? Mm-hmm. How's um, well, I, I used to go under Charlie Brown before, oh. and then I got a like I got a like a Warner Brothers sent me an actual email. I have I still have it saved to this day. They sent you um, season to yeah, season. Oh, season. Oh, like, oh, that's, when I started, that's when I started getting a bit more popular. So Charlie Brown name was like everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Like, oh, the young kid, Charlie Brown, Charlie Brown, Charlie. Brown. Dang, and then, that's wild. And then um, yeah, so that's how it happened. That's that's one of the reasons. Um, uh, but I got glitched because I was working on music. Um, at Hot Gems Records, um, 2006, I had come out of school, out of college. I went to a record this record store. Mm-hmm. Um, it's no longer it's no longer open, but um, 2006, 2007, that's when I went there, um, and I started working on music. That's where it all started, like the production stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was, I was working working on music one day. And everything was like I, I was making snares, the class, or like glitching it up, and mm. like making it dope, and then the, uh, the entire power just <laughs> turns off. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, and it's like I'm glitching shit. Oh, oh yeah, my god! Just boom! And what the hell? Like, you blew a circuit. Glitch. What you do? And yeah, that was a glitch. Charlie and then my glitch. boy's like Charlie Glitch. <laughs> Charlie Glitch. I'm like, damn, that's a pretty dope name, Charlie Glitch. So he's like, you should, just, you should just change there it. You like go. you're already going through this fucking. I mean, sorry, can I swear here? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're already going through this through this like part or this this change in your life where if you don't change your name you're gonna get sued bro so yeah it's like it all kind of just it kind of all fell to like it all kind of just it's, meshed it's the, a line, yeah, line, it lined up when it needed yeah. to I guess nice but the glitch Charlie Glitch came out um one of my friends Leo Leo shout he, out to Leo yeah shout out to Leo Salcedo Kira Smith um he's the one that that shouted it out, Charlie Glitch, <laughs> and all the powers out. It's dark in the room. I'm dark in the Change village. your oh, life. <laughs> you know, that's wild. So as a as a um, life as a, at a DJ level at your level, do you have you gone uh, met through those like shady people like that Peter guy we were just talking about like shit like that? Oh yeah, oh I met a lot of shady people. <laughs> I I you know what's sad? I want to be honest. I I met so many other shady people that I thought. It was part of the game, and I started becoming shady oh. at, at one point. Oh no! Man. You know, at a young, at an early, yeah. at an early age. You know what I mean? Because yeah. like you're young, and you're looking up to all these other people, and it's like, yo, you guys are supposed to be like, kind of like my pioneers, like my my like models. my role models. Yeah. But I see you guys are being shady. Is this the way I'm supposed to be too? Then, mm. you know, what, what in what way though? Like, just like pay, um, talk shit behind people's um, backs, kind of stuff, and it's like I know it was wrong. Like, damn, I feel bad about this, but it's like everyone in the industry is doing this, or is they just doing, are they just doing it to me because I'm young, mm. you know? So that's also why. That's like how the hip hop drama man. shit starts too. Like the yeah, rappers, that's wild as fuck. Damn. Yeah, so it's like 
I mean, like like we said, like when we grow up, we grow up a certain way, mm-hmm. and then that sticks to us. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I was in the game already by twelve years old. You know what I mean? So I I kind of I picked up on it, and then it's just like you you start becoming like somewhat a product of that environment. Right, yeah. right, yeah. You know, and then you realize like, damn, this is I don't feel good about doing this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I feel good about creating music. I, I love DJing. I love this, but some of the work ethic that I've encountered it kind of rubbed off rubbed off on me because I thought it was okay to do stuff like that mm-hmm. um, but now you feel you feel you feel like crap you know what I mean yeah. did, you, were, did you cut those people out oh yeah I cut them off mm-hmm. yeah I cut honestly I cut a lot of people off that were there since the beginning like I cut yeah. a lot so right now it's basically me again shit which is okay um, because I'm also I've also been able to grow I've also been able to know my worth and what I do want mm-hmm. to what I do need so mm-hmm. I can continue yeah to to stay relevant and still be an artist and and have the creative freedom mm-hmm. yeah um but now it's <clears throat> like like I said the whole ego thing ego tripping all that like mm-hmm. it's 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 almost a, it's almost gone you know it's almost like okay but I mean it's like sometimes it comes back in where it's yeah. like someone's trying to check you now and right. like, like yo bro like chill yeah. you know I mean? well, this is what I did well this is what I did but you don't see me like yeah. mm-hmm. you know what I mean I know exactly what you mean when you were dealing with these shady people did they talk behind your back like with with people you were friends with as well yeah so okay so my question to this is um, I guess in, in regards to loyalty maybe but how do you like, let's say that guy's being shady to him, right? But he's treating you nicely. So then, mm-hmm. how do you like? He's not doing anything bad to you, but you're, you're good friends with him. How do you keep that relationship? Should um, you keep that relationship? Well, you, there's a there's there's a certain uh just keep a certain distance. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, always don't don't really tell anyone your your next moves anymore. Like mm-hmm. don't even just move in like really move in silence. Mm-hmm. You know. And like I said, if anyone that you want to work with or you still want them involved in the circle somehow, yeah. they need a they need a thing to do. They need they need they need something to contribute. You know what I mean? They gotta they have to contribute something. They have to if they want to be part of it. You know what I mean? Um, they have to play their role. You know, like if one guy's talking smack, but he's a good graphic designer. All right, well, you want to still be around me? You're my graphic designer now. Just mm-hmm. you, all you do is graphic work. I'm gonna only communicate with you and what I know that you're strong traits are like right. that's where you're that's that's what you're gonna do mm. you know if you're if you talk smack but you know you can talk smack in a good way and you're on the internet well you just be my mark you're like my guy that i need to rant right. and do like social media posts so i can attract mm-hmm. you know so it's just it's just really learning how to just put everyone in placement and, and what they're good at yeah mm-hmm. damn that sucks up because then you create like barrier i mean it's good and bad right the barrier but i mean trust. that's also like um that's creating a environment where it's like, no, the group is still growing. Right? Yeah. Because you're pushing them to do what they do best, right? And they're still growing in that aspect. Mm-hmm. While at the same time, you're growing with them. Yeah, you know, people might talk smack, talk shit, but if you're still working with them and, you know, you're chill with them and stuff like that, it's still a positive environment because of the fact that, you know, you're both or everyone is still growing. Yeah, in a positive way, right? The graphic designer is just gonna get better, right? By design, by designing more, right? Yep. The your social media guy is just gonna get better at like connecting and kind of like responding to fans, guests, and even even haters, right? The more you, you know, you put them out there, yeah, you know, and vice versa, you know, you're just gonna get better because like you know, now you can focus in on your music, mm-hmm. right? And it's like it's really trust. It's it's yeah. trust. Like the thing is that now. The, like loyalty is out there trust is out there it's just a little harder now to actually see it and and want it and be like okay you know I, I, i'll trust you mm. you know what i mean it's like because everything's like wishy-washy right so I it's like, like we, 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 yeah, yeah we understand like i understand like yo like we're gonna almost we're, we're all gonna fuck up we're all gonna yeah you know what i mean we're gonna get mad and maybe talk shit one day but i'm still gonna have her oh, back yeah. or whatever like damn yeah. like it's well, just more yeah. like <laughs> It's just like, okay, what's the end? What's the real end goal? Like, yeah. we all want to be rich. We all want to be famous. We right. want to be successful. But it's just like, we all know that we can do it together. But we also know that there has to be one person that has to be like the like the face of it. Like like I said, like, like it has to be like, what's going to be the pers- the proper person to market. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like making sure that... I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, it's cool. Um, just making sure like that 
you within yourself are are still loyal to your word and your and, and your end goal mm-hmm. yeah then everything will fall into place you know what i mean because mm-hmm. like if you're gonna run a business whatever business you're in you have to be a master at that already yeah you know what i mean i'm not gonna open up a uh an eye doctor spot i'm not yeah. even know anything about eyes anything about right. my eyes and like right. you know what i mean lenses and all that like you know yeah so it's like if you're gonna get into something do your research know it master that craft to the 10,000 hours if you need it which is mm. what three years yeah you know what I mean yeah finesse the game you know what I mean mm-hmm. play the game play the game right you know um, you're always gonna you are, you're you're gonna go through all the stages in, in in being an artist an entrepreneur or just a human being right you're gonna go through all the stages you're gonna be sad you're gonna be good at the, you're gonna be the good the bad and the ugly mm. you know yeah. what I mean it's like you're gonna be happy and right and then 20 minutes, you could probably be like, oh, nothing's going my way. But it's just reassuring yourself and telling yourself, like, look, I'm meant, to, I'm going through this because I'm meant to go through it because I know how to handle it. Mm. You know? Yeah. Like, if I'm getting played, you know what? I'm getting paid because I can handle the fact that someone's playing me instead of going on notes, like, oh, I'm going to. Right. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's just like, okay, I'm going through this. As a, as, it's, a, it's a lesson. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm learn not losing it. it. Yeah. yeah. Just learn from it, learn from the lesson. And you're still here, we're still breathing. Because we we have the next we have the next step to take and the next move to make you know, mm-hmm. um, and actually going off of that, what what advice would you like to give our listeners in addition to that? Um, advice. It could be life. It could be hustling. Don't the thing is that I know it's easier it's easier said than done, but just don't give up. Don't give up on yourself. Um. Um cherish it every moment you know what i mean enjoy everything mm-hmm. your friends your family um at the end of the day we don't know where we're gonna go you know yeah. at the end of this 3d dimensional world we don't know where we're really gonna go um so just make the best of it you know stay focused if you're an artist keep pushing it if you're if you're a uh, young business entrepreneur go with it if you want to open up a business take that risk you know what i mean because at the end of the day we're gonna be gone and it's just like you know it's like basically like we gotta leave our little fossils now and our yeah. fossils are like usb yeah. drives our fossils are like are like a that's bag so of funny, data man. like you know nowadays I mean? if you think about yeah. the fossils like usb drives yeah basically that's <laughs> yeah, what it is yeah, yeah. you know what i mean like oh i dug up a bone like from thirty thousand right, right. million years ago like now yeah. now there's a, a cd with right. all these old you know just yeah, like yeah, yeah. build up everything that you want for yourself um, and you'll attract the right people. And you'll attract the right people. You know what I mean? Obviously, they say a lot of attraction and all that. You know, it, that's real. You know? Um, that's true. Stay positive. You know, I got to do this more, but eat healthy. Mm. You know? <laughs> um, we all work out, a little bit. Yeah. Work out, you know? Um, mm. Don't be scared to say no if, if you have a gut feeling like, oh, like, I, I, they want me to do this and not. Like, nah. Like, you know, worry about your mental health. You have no one to please but yourself. Um, yeah, just... It's all about the mental. Just take care of your mental, really. If you can take care of your mental and just keep telling yourself, like, look, I know what I'm going through. This, You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, write down your patterns. Figure out your patterns. You know what I mean? What works, what doesn't work. Just, there's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, actually, real quick. Was it hard for you? This is just for, like a personal question. Was it hard for you to come out um, from the South Side? Or were you? would you say you were like, lucky to have the people around you kind of mentor you up? You know what? Uh, it was, it was hard. Now that I think about it, it was hard, but it was fun. Mm. That's what made it like, that's what made like mm-hmm. the, the, the process of it just like smooth because it was fun doing it, you know? Yeah. So I do, I do, I do love the people that were around to help me. Um, Bug and Beats was one of them, Beatles Studios, June Bug, uh, Accent, Restricted Radio, my entire family, uh, Christian, Rob, Fabian, Camilo, my sister, Gotti, my mom, dad. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my entire crew that I created, which is Ghetto Division. Uh, so, the, yeah, it was it was hard, but it was worth it. Um, and, you know, I'll do it again. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'll do it again. I'm still doing it. But now it's just like I'm learning from I'm learning from what not to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. That's dope. That's dope. Uh, Literally, what you said—just embrace everything, right? Yeah. Just embrace your life mm-hmm. and live it 
for yourself mm-hmm. and keep your mental health in check. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the most important. Yeah, awesome. Um, any plugs you want to shout out? Yeah, shout out to uh, shout out to High by Yo because mm-hmm. without them, this wouldn't this wouldn't be able to happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. Shout out to High by Yo for um, yeah. Nikki Hawk. Uh, thank you. I love you guys. Um, shout out to my entire Ghetto Division family. Um, shout out to Drone Recording. Shout out to Le Kukui, um, Sunny Goldman, Rap Three, D Fifty One. Um, Cam on the Beats mm-hmm. uh, Stan was that Los Desvelados Shout out to Desvelados There's a new crew Coming up in Chicago Southside Oh for sure Yeah okay, so Be on the lookout for them they're, they're gonna do some good stuff Hell yeah uh, It's fire Everyone er- Everyone are All Pilsen All Southside mm-hmm. All just Chicago, Chicago, you know. Shout out to the world. Shout out to the world. Yeah, there you go. There so you go. everyone, if you guys want to work, um, um, I'm accepting demos and promos now because I have the record label back up and running. Nice. So we're, we'll be on all we're on all platforms: Beatport, uh, Title, iTunes Music. Uh, I mean, Apple Music, um, Spotify. So if you want to get your music out, um, email everything to ghetto division at gmail dot com. Um, I spell that. G H E T T O D I V I S I O N Ghetto Division at Gmail dot com. Um, hopefully you guys could plug the we'll plug those yeah in. plug yeah, those things in. Mm-hmm. Also Charlie Glitch everything Charlie Glitch. Um, add me on IG Charlie underscore Glitch that'll probably be tagged in the two. The links below yeah yeah, yeah links below links so below. check out the links below yes sir you know um, yeah. So shout out to Chicago. Any events coming up? Uh yeah, so, uh, I have an event actually this Tuesday, January fourteenth at a uh, at Beauty Bar, um from ten to two, um and I'm there bi weekly. So every second and fourth, uh Tuesday I am at um Beauty Bar at Beauty Bar. Awesome. Um, I have a huge event coming up, February fifteenth. At uh, Imbibe in Humble Park, and I'm gonna be doing a live set with a percussionist and a trumpet player. Oh, oh sweet. so stop by. It's Valentine's uh, Valentine's weekend. It's a Saturday. All that will be on my IG. So For sure. yeah, follow my IG. Follow the Ghetto Division IG. Um, we have a lot of cool stuff. For sure, awesome. awesome, awesome. Um, okay, and for the eating cast, make sure to follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, um, and Instagram. Facebook page too if you guys use that uh, we're on all platforms and um, yeah keep doing your thing listen to us share this these episodes um, and I hope we hope that you guys learn something from all of this yes we, do. Um, yes we do and yeah don't forget we really we really need the uh, ratings and reviews <laughs> on Apple Podcasts so it only takes like 30 seconds of your time to rate that yeah. and leave a little comment but yeah awesome so with that said for our viewers and our listeners, we just want to say thank you for dining with the Eating Cast. I know, again, we didn't have food. We apologize for that. But again, thank you. And thank you, Charlie, for coming on. Okay, thank it was you a guys. pleasure. And we will catch you guys on the next one. So take care. See ya. Bye-bye. <laughs>